Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here. A while back I did a top 5 video to celebrate my first year of activity, and that was incredibly well received, so I thought I'd start doing them a little more often. First up though, I'd just quickly like to say a big thanks to everyone who's pledged to support Space Dock Planet Side in the last couple of weeks. It's a huge help, and I can't wait until it's ready to go and I can get started on the new show. If any of you watching are unaware of Space Dock Planet Side, you can find more information at the link below. Okay, now without further ado, back to one of my all time favourite franchises for my top 5 Mass Effect starships. First up, in fifth place, we have a ship that was given unfortunately little screen time, the Alliance SX-3 Interceptor. Now, this ship was brought in as part of a fleet-wide refit the Alliance underwent following the Battle of the Citadel, and replaced an older fighter called the F-61 Trident. Personally, I think this is just one of the coolest looking fighters in science fiction. Such a fantastic adaptation of established Alliance designs into a smaller craft. It looks incredibly sleek and nimble, and the smaller versions of the classic Alliance sublight engines look fantastic. I'd love to have seen more of these across the series, but what I'd really like to see at some point is a Mass Effect dogfighting game. A great opportunity to add loads of new ship cannon to the series. In fact, I actually had an idea a while ago that you may have seen me tweet about, so if anyone from Bioware is watching or knows anyone from the company, listen up. Right, imagine a dogfighting game which follows the SSV Hawking, which is a ship that we know Cortez served on, and it delves into the conflict with the Batarians during the Anhur rebellions and the events surrounding the Skillian Blitz. Flying sorties against the Batarians, flesh out the history of Cortez's character even more, in fact you could even expand on that and keep going long after Cortez leaves, maybe even have your character end up as the CAG after he turns it down. Then we can follow the ship as it goes all the way through the Battle of the Citadel and eventually the Reaper War, start out fighting Batarians in your F-61 Trident, wind up fighting Reapers over Earth in your SX-3. Bioware could even rattle a game like this off on the Free Space Open Source project with a tiny team for minimal cost and put it up as a 20 quid download. It would be a great addition to the universe, make a bit of money for them in the process. But yeah, the SX3 is great, it looks really cool, I love the design, would love to see it fleshed out more. Okay, in fourth place, I've put the Destiny Ascension. Now, I've always thought the Ascension was a great way to adapt the culture and styles of the Asari into a warship. It looks like a cathedral or something. It's a vast, towering monolith with a smooth, curving hull and its huge open segment running through the center all the way through the vessel. The whole thing just feels powerful. You can see it cruising past the viewports on the wards in ME1. It just looks vast, even with the enormity of the Citadel behind it. It really does remind you how powerful and advanced the Asari really are. It was also great to see it again in ME3, albeit briefly, if the council are alive. Though we don't see on screen, I'm going to imagine the Ascension managed to deal the Reapers some serious damage in that battle. Up for number 3 is the UT-47A Kodiak Drop Shuttle, that's the refit we see in ME3. This is one of my favourite shuttlecraft in sci-fi, it just looks so utilitarian and straightforward in its design, and everything we hear about it in the Codex, about how it was tested on Venus and stuff, is just incredibly cool. The thing is clearly just an absolute brick, it's the AK-47 of shuttlecraft. This thing will go anywhere and suffer through anything and just keep plodding along. I prefer the A variant because it's pretty much just a direct improvement on its predecessor, it adds some mass accelerator cannons and a nice new Alliance paint job, as well as a retractable machine gun turret in the troop compartment. I'm really glad they brought so much more attention to the shuttles in ME3. We get lots of cool briefings in there, we get to see the cockpit more often, and the auditory emulators, the holographic windows. We even get to joyride one around the Citadel in the DLC. Fantastic little shuttle design, and I'm really glad we're getting a new one in Andromeda. So, in second place, we have the mainstay cruiser of the Systems Alliance following the fleet-wide refit. Now, there's unfortunately no clear class name in the canon for this vessel. For a long time, it looked like it should be the Geneva class, based on many articles in the Codex which use this term to describe standard Alliance cruisers. But then somebody at Bioware put in a scene into ME3 where you're ship spotting with Cortez and notice the SSV London, a ship the Codex calls a Geneva class cruiser, and the in-game asset for it is the same one used for all the human freighters. So that threw all logic out the window and now we have no idea. A lot of fans say York class, but with no canon answer I'm in no place to state anything as fact. But whatever this class is called, it's damn cool. I just love the angular design of Alliance warships, the way the central spine with the big accelerator batteries is flanked by huge sheets of slanted armour to deflect damage. It looks tough and functional, and I'm a huge fan of it. I wish we'd got to see the inside of these at some point, and to be honest, more than anything, I'd just love to see a Mass Effect cross-section book or some online equivalent, just to give us all the facts and names for these amazing designs, just so that these ships could be fully fleshed out with all the information in the way that they really do deserve.
Here we are, first place, and it's probably a fairly predictable one, but it just had to be the Normandy SR2. This is one of my all-time favourite sci-fi spacecraft, I'm talking like top three. This ship is just gorgeous. Its design is a work of art, where its predecessor was a little small, this one is just the perfect size for a recon frigate, with a couple of shuttlecraft and plenty of internal space. My favourite version is the Alliance refit from ME3, partially because I love the Alliance blue colours, but also because the refit just adds so much cool stuff. After ME2, we've now got the Thanex cannon and the Solaris armour, etc, but as well, we also have a war room, a better location for the armory, a refit for the shuttles, and a general improvement to the visual style of the interior. I've spent many, many hours touring this ship across more playthroughs than I dare to count, and the vessel just captures the Starship experience in a way that no other design has. I should also say that this kind of recon frigate sized vessel is right in the middle of what I'd call the best range of size for hero ships in a sci-fi series. It's in here with the Rosinante and the USS Defiant and some other ships in that same kind of area, large enough to have an extensive and well designed interior so you can make it feel like a home for your characters and let the audience become attached to it as a location, but small enough that you can make its helmsman seem like a badass and put it through all kinds of crazy manoeuvres. Big enormous carriers are cool and people like me and I'm sure most of you can watch them lumber around going about their business with total fascination, but I think if you want to give the average audience a kind of hero ship they will really love, this is the way to go.